Uh, my name is Dan Roden. I'm one of the organizers of this uh, day and a half long event. And uh, I know there are more people registered than there are people in this room, but in the interest of keeping us on time, I'm going to start now and let the, uh, let the minders let people in as, as they show their tickets. Uh, before I, I I'm going to give a, a, a little 10 minute introduction, and I apologize to those of you who were here at the beginning of the session yesterday because it's almost the same as what you heard yesterday, but some of you weren't here, so you just have to hear it again. Uh, two announcements. Um, at the end of this session, we were gonna, we're gonna distribute questionnaires. Uh, it's one page, and you just have to fill in a number and say yes or no to a couple of questions. It'll be very useful for us if you did that so we can plan uh, future sessions. And the other announcement is that the fifth uh, meeting of the European Society of Pharmacogenomics and Personalized Medicine is happening in October 2019 in Seville. A lovely place to visit as long as you don't go in the middle of the summer. And uh, so those of you who are interested in uh, expanding your European personalized medicine horizons, that seems like an interesting way to do it. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why we're having this meeting and uh, the intersection between the pharmacogenomics community and the, uh, the, uh, the human genetics community. Uh, you'd think that they were completely congruent and they're not. Uh, this meeting has been organized by, uh, mainly by Pauline Minhennet at uh, ASHG and Lawrence Lynn uh, through the PGRN hub, Lawrence Wave, so everyone knows who Lawrence is. And then there's a, a, a list of other people who have had something to do with the program, but it's mainly been, been them. Pharmacogenomics, the low-hanging fruit of genomic implementation. And, and I think this cartoon actually says uh, a, a lot about low-hanging fruit because it looks like it's low-hanging, it looks like it should be easy, and it's not. Uh, and we heard a lot about that over the last couple of uh, sessions, and we'll continue to hear about that this afternoon. Uh, I, I, for those of you who are in the human genetics space and not in the pharmacogenetics space, I thought I would talk a little bit about the history of pharmacogenetics. We start in the same place as human genetics, or in much the same place. Uh, Garrod, the uh, man who invented the term inborn errors of metabolism, speculated that uh, unusual reactions to food and to drugs might be due to the same kind of inborn errors of metabolism as he described in his uh, diseases. And uh, so he's credited with the idea. The first examples were African-American soldiers exposed to anti-malarial drugs in the Second World War in the Pacific Theater, uh, many of whom developed hemolytic anemia because of a high prevalence of G6PD deficiency. Over the course of the 1950s, uh, Two scientists, one interested in uh, hematologic abnormalities and one interested in anesthetic uh, mishaps, uh, uh, both described genetic syndromes or pharmacogenetic syndromes. One was Arno Matulski at Seattle and the other is Werner Kahlo in Toronto. It's interesting that the field of pharmacogenetics grew up from the work of these two men, both of whom were refugees from uh, Germany uh, after the war. Uh, and you can have an argument about which of them invented the term pharmacogenetics, but they both used it pretty early on uh, in, uh, in, in their histories. Uh, time passes, it became possible to measure drug levels and understand that aberrant responses to drugs might be due to unusual metabolism. And, uh, well, and, and two scientists at, uh, in, uh, at Hopkins, uh, McCusick, well known to the genetics community, and David Price Evans, a very distinguished pharmacogeneticist, worked together. Price Evans was McCusick's fellow at the time to describe acetyltransferase deficiencies. And then two scientists in, the, in England in, uh, and in Germany in the 1970s described CYP2D6 uh, deficiency states, Bob Smith in London and Michel Eichelbaum in Bonn. And uh, the first description of the idea that, that specific HLA haplotypes might be associated with uh, variable drug responses in the Stevens-Johnson syndrome specifically was in 2002, and that was by Simon Malal, who at the time was in Perth and is now at Vanderbilt. So I'm very happy to put his name and slide up there. The Pharmacogenetics Research Network was the brainchild of two individuals at uh, NIGMS, Rochelle Long 
uh, and Mike Rogers, who championed the idea uh, both internally at the Institute and then uh, created the network, which was funded initially in 2000. Uh, one of the first sites that was funded was the PharmGKB, the pharmacogenetics knowledge base, which exists to this day. Interestingly, its funding is now switched to NHGRI. And um, uh, PharmGKB has grown over the last 20 years to be an interesting and uh, I wouldn't say all-inclusive, but pretty inclusive repository of information on variability in drug response, pathways that are important, drugs that are important, genes that are important uh, for that. Um, one of the things that we realized as we were putting together the pharmacogenetics research network, each site had its own individual scientific focus. So we were the arrhythmia site, there were cancer sites, there were cholesterol sites, there were other sites. And, and we realized that we were sort of frag a fragmented community and we decided to come together over something. And one of the first things we did was coordinate the International War for and Pharmacogenomics Consortium. Uh, which accumulated around 5,000 patients with INR values and genetic data, uh, produced a, 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 uh, an algorithm for warfarin dosing that was published in the New England Journal, along with an editorial from the FDA. So the FDA started to get interested in this around this time from Larry Lesko and uh, Janet Woodcock. And one of the other ways in which we tried to create international outreach was the creation of the Pharmacogenomics Research Network and the Center for Genomic Medicine Alliance. The Center for Genomic Medicine was in Yokohama, uh, a Recon Center, and that center has funded about 50 projects uh, doing GWAS and other kind of uh, high-level interrogations, most recently sequencing to identify variants and loci responsible for variable drug actions. After one of our uh, retreats that occurred every five years or so, a delegation of six of us made what I think is a, an important and historic visit to uh, Marshfield, Wisconsin. We visited uh, the Marshfield Personalized Medicine Program, which was at the time one of the few that was EHR based and uh, visited Mike Caldwell, who was the guy in charge. Mike had a couple of distinguishing features. He was a surgeon. Uh, he was the creator of this personalized medicine program. And he grew he grew, he raised Belgian Belties, that's the, that's the picture of this cow. And we had a, an interesting time discussing the idea that EHRs could be used for, uh, for pharmacogenomic research. Uh, out of that has grown a, a number of initiatives, including the Pharmacogenetics Research Network's Translational Pharmacogenetics Program, uh, CPIC, which we've heard a lot about over the last uh, day or two, that. Uh, uh, produces guidelines around what to do if you have a genetic variant in terms of uh, changing drugs, changing dosages. And we've also created alliances with Emerge uh, and the, uh, in particular at Emerge, uh, PGX project that has started, a couple, started about five years ago and is still ongoing. I show this picture, uh, uh, which is all of us who went to the first uh, meeting in Japan uh, to pitch our ideas to the uh, Center for Genomic Medicine. And I show it in particular to highlight the fact that for, for, for a long time, since the beginning, we've had representation from ASHG. This is your former president from two years ago, Nancy Cox, who was part of that community, part of that visit, and uh, continues to be part of that community. PGRN activities are organized largely around the PGRN hub, which is whose homepage is shown here and is, can be reached at pgrn.org. Everything you want to know about joining PGRN, participating in pharmacogenetics activities, uh, what kind of activities are going on are coordinated here. You can tell exactly when I made this slide because uh, of the dates on it. Uh, so I have thought about uh, the Pharmacogenetics Research Network and the American Society for Human Genetics as two very important parts of uh, the science of uh, variable drug responses, but in many ways they are representative of this uh, interesting novel from Hugh McClellan. Uh, I'm a Canadian, and Hugh McClellan is a famous Canadian author. The Two Solitudes are, is a novel about uh, how English and French Canadians never talk to each other. And so my vision is that at some point we'll dissolve that barrier and we'll work together better and more. We uh, started this alliance with a pharmacogenetics uh, a symposium two years ago at ASHG. They had 325 attendees there. We had a poster session last year, and this year we had another poster session and this symposium. There were twice as many posters. Uh, 
and twice as many at registrants. And the registrants are going to come in. And we filled this room up uh, earlier today, and we'll continue to fill it up. So there is obviously a lot of interest in this alliance, and uh, we hope to see it grow further. And I'll just close by telling you that we had three uh, poster trainees who won posters. Uh, I'll let you read their titles, but they're uh, Alexei Sazanovs from the Welcome Sanger Institute, Emily Finch from St. Jude's, and Catherine Convince from Vanderbilt. Uh, and I think we should just give all three of those and all the poster presenters a, a round of applause. So that's, that's the end of my introductory remarks, and I'll leave it to Jeff and Munir to manage the rest of this session. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, so my name is Munipur Mohammed. I'm uh, from the UK. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be co-chairing the session uh, with Dr. Jeffrey Kidd. Um, I, uh, I chair the UK Pharmacogenetics Stratified Medicine Network, and it's a great pleasure to have been involved in the organizing committee together with the PGR and AS ASHG. Uh, to date, it's been a very uh, interesting meeting. The thing that we learn is that you know, there are many terms out there for uh, personalized medicine, uh, personalized medicine, stratified medicine, precision medicine, and this morning we heard the term network medicine. What that all tells you is that we have an awful lot to do because when we've done all that, it will just be called medicine. <laughs> 